Let's face it, business technology is frustrating and complex. So how do you make sure it works for your team? To make IT right, start the discussion at go-domain.com. You're listening to Discussions by Domain, a podcast for business leaders. Our discussions may be with people you've probably heard of before, but the majority of our guests are in the trenches, professionals like you and I, with the same challenges and struggles of keeping up in the Northeast. They're implementing strategies, overcoming hurdles. They're leading the fastest growing businesses in our region. My name is Anthony DeGraw, Director of Partnerships at Domain Computer Services and the host of this show. When I'm not talking with business leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of Domain and the ups and downs of our own growth journey as we intend to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome to another episode of Discussions by Domain. Today we have Mr. Rob Bufano. He is the controller over at Domain Computer Services. This is his first time on the show, which I'm pumped about because we have conversations probably daily. Yeah, I'd say so. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. In his office about what the hell is going on yeah. in sales, marketing, finance, and whatnot. But uh, Rob has completely transformed domains. I want domains finances in the th- three or four years yeah, now four that years you've been now. here. Yeah. Four years where he, he just kind of came in full, full fledged. Uh, he has an interesting background. So I want him to touch a little bit on that. Uh, but he's going to talk to the importance of business financing, getting your ducks in a row, and how that can transform your business from where that is to the, the future and what that looks like. So welcome, man. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. So real quick, I, yeah. I was we we said this on uh, on the po- or on discussions by domains Instagram account. We took a picture of this. So you can check it out there. But uh, this quote that was gifted to me by Mr. Vitali also reminds me of uh, Rob Bufano over here. So if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. So like that. thank That's you, true. sir. No problem. So we'll, we'll start there. Tell us a little bit, uh, the audience, a little bit about yourself and kind of what you're doing here, as well as your background um, yeah. that we've talked a lot about. Obviously. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, first of all, I'm a finance guy. I'm a numbers guy, mm-hmm. as you'd expect. Always talking about the numbers and everything. I obviously love math big time. Uh, my background, basically, you know, I started out in doing a public accounting, which is not the most glorious thing in the world. <laughs> you imagine. It seems like, oh, you're probably the most boring person. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I was able to transition to then financial analyst at work. Okay. I actually was able to then work in the city for a uh, record label, Republic Motown Records. So that my, within that eight-year period, and a whole lot of understanding of finances related to the record industry. Yeah. So is, name yeah. drop real quick. Name drop some record, uh, some artists that you were uh, that uh, you, you knew or that you I'm, handled. I'm not right? sure people remember this. Akon. Yeah. Uh, Nelly. People maybe remember that. I yeah. feel now dated because all the artists are probably not a big deal anymore. Yeah. That being said, we worked with Cash Money, so people uh, probably know like Nicki Minaj, uh, Little Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. So like Drake. So maybe people remember those. Yeah. But, uh, it was pretty interesting that and then that industry because I also got the and. The, there's an interesting shift where when I joined, CDs were plummeting. Oh. So the profitability was basically decreased because they were making so much profit on CDs. As the digital was coming up, they didn't know how to handle the digital transformation. Wow. And we always talk about technology and all that, you know. Yeah. Technology Not be able to keep up with that. You could see the basically the problem of a company just being able to just suffer financially. Wow. So That's I mean, that experience is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. So you saw the you know, the profitability of something they were making a ton of profit on just dropping. You have the digital coming up and not knowing how to handle it. That's That was a great time to be there just from lessons learned, exactly. right? And the greatest thing you'd see how not poor we're thinking, I would say, most of these record industries were because they were not discussing like, what is the next thing? Like they didn't understand the next thing was say ringtones. The next thing was actually, you know, digital downloads. Then it became streaming. That was after the fact. Yeah. So because of that, they had to play catch up. Yeah. And then the costs, wow. they always had these high costs and they weren't able to can they weren't able to get the best revenue possible. Gotcha. They were able to profit in the market. <laughs> which is again for me it was great in terms of experience because you can just see the importance of just thinking ahead. Yeah. Be wow. much like exactly. Okay. And then from there you transition to domain, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, t- tell us about what you know, what excited you about domain? What did that opportunity look like? And and what have you been just doing in the last, let's say, 
year and a half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, the biggest thing was just an opportunity to work at like almost uh, like Domain Room was like almost a startup. We've been around for 20 years, as probably people listening to this podcast understand. But that being said, we're a very startup, entrepreneurial kind of company. It yeah. was forward thinking. And that's kind of what I was looking for. I wanted to go to somewhere that was smaller because my obviously at um, Republic Records, it was a, a huge corporate company. Exactly. So I want to come in, you know, have the experience. I had the corporate experience, come in now and just run the show somewhere and yeah. work with a lot of people and just have a different kind of touch, as you could say. Okay. So coming in at uh, here was great, just having that ability and just interact with different people. And that was very like the selling point of why I want to come to demand. Yeah. And yeah. I would say for you, what I've noticed the most is you're able to have your hands in every single thing yes. and you're able to affect a lot of the different units here yeah. to get everybody moving together, which has been great. That's the biggest thing. Cause again, working at a larger company, there's always benefits. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes you get typecast where you're just doing one function. Like there was just finance coming here. I'm working so much with operations, sales, marketing, everything, which exactly. is just a great learning experience and just it was more enjoyable dealing with a lot more people at different departments. Agreed. You're a CEO, you're an executive, you're a founder. You've been doing either your finances yourself, you have a bookkeeper coming in, maybe you're outsourcing, you're most likely outsourcing your taxes to an yeah. accounting firm of some size. What should that executive be looking for when they're looking to bring in their first controller yeah. CFO role? Well, I think the most important is don't expect someone to be a number cruncher in there. Where is the business going and what decisions you need to make? That is part of actually you want someone to come in who can actually be part of your leadership team yeah. and understand strategy. So you need to have that someone bring someone in like that. Okay. So then you can rely on that person to help you guide your organization. Agreed. Yeah, so it's two agreed. functions. You obviously make sure all internal controls are in, everything's stable, but then where are we going? And then working with other levels of people within the organization and the executive team to understand where, like, what's our strategy. Okay. And having that data for that. What is in that? So that, that I mean, we could go on to a whole thing of how do you find that person, exactly. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but let's we'll, we'll stay away from that. Yeah. In those first like ninety days, hundred and eighty days of you coming on, or or that executive hiring that individual, yeah. that CEO hiring that individual, what are some like couple KPIs, maybe key key performance indicators, or? like areas that you could like really move the needle on or you're really trying to, even in you coming on, trying yeah. to like, I need to grasp these three things. Exactly. Like, what is that? First thing I definitely is understanding what's going on cash flow. So your account's payable and account's receivable. Okay. Those are the biggest functions right away in terms of are you leveraging your working capital? Okay. So going, again, first thing I think you want to make sure your processes are in those first 180 days, let's say, yeah. so you can get good data. Okay. With good data, you can start measuring things. Once you start measuring, okay, cash, that has been important to any organization. Would no, you can that's the most important thing. Yeah. Like, that being said, then even just gross margins, kind of get an idea. Again, if the data is good, you can get an idea, hopefully, of where your gross margins are, and then where do you want to be? Okay. Is it where you want to be, or do you want to be at a certain level, or do you need to increase? And then you can start digging deeper into what other areas you can affect the business. And that's where again it's important to once you get the idea of the numbers and the KPIs, you start talking to operations, start going to sales and marketing and see. How can we move the needle? Yeah. And also then communicating that hopefully to those departments. And those gotcha. People have, and they, you don't want to get buy-in to understand how can we improve this company. Yeah. No, I, I like that a lot because yeah. it's like, all right, cash flow, cash is king. We need cash to run a business, yeah. right? Um, but then it's also w the gross margin, right? And I, I think where you've been done a phenomenal job and, and domain as, as well as joining uh, – it's an IT nation evolve and yes. a, a peer group organization where you can, you had some benchmarks of like, as coming in, like, Hey, these are the gross margins exactly. we need to have and whatnot. So you already knew like, this is what best in class looks like for yep. our industry. Here's where we're at. All right, we need to get this from here to there. And you go talk to those teams and say, how can we improve this? Exactly. Here's some of my thoughts. You know, what are you thinking on your end? So yeah. No, that's that's good stuff. I would um, like to add that I mean, even if say you're not part of a peer network, there's always information out there that a CFO or a control coming in, you could understand in what industry, what are the guidelines, what are the kind of best in class numbers. Yeah. So there's always thank God data out there. Okay. Or other organizations you're going to join, luckily that can guide you where you got to be and what does good look like. Yeah, no, that, that's very good. So yeah. with that, we're just going to skip right ahead to that question, yeah. which was uh, what organizations have helped you in your role that yeah. these people could look at? Okay, um, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. my first choice would be the CFO Alliance, which has uh, been a national uh, organization. It's been very helpful in first networking and understanding other people in my position or people that are where I want to be. Okay. Like, obviously, I have some experience in this position, but I'm not a 20 year old, 20 year veteran of CFO. Correct. I want to be there. So, having be able to go to those people and understand in that network, you know, having advice. 
and kind of guiding you where you want to be. That's very influential. And then again, in all organizations, all different industries, all throughout the country. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So CFO Alliance, yeah. it's probably just CFO, CFO Alliance dot org or yeah, dot com. Like we'll have uh, Tyler link to that in the show notes. But that that's a really good organization. Yeah. And and credit to to Rob here. I've told him over probably over the last year and a half that you're ability to go out and network or go to the CFO yeah. Alliance and these meetings and Middlesex County exactly. you've been going to, yep. all these different things is giving him exposure, but he also gets domain exposure. And he'll go and talk to these other CFOs and whatnot, which happen to drive a lot of the decisions for yes. what we do, right? And he'll be able to say, hey, what are you doing on the IT side? You know, where are you, where are you struggling with? And it generates opportunities for us. Exactly. So I appreciate it, one. But number two, your CFO or controller or whatever can be involved in actual biz development by getting out into those things. Yeah. I think this is important, again, Everyone expects the CFO or controller role to be just the old Tam way of just, you know, no one does not talk to people, yeah. stays in the office. I think, fortunately, that, I mean, a good way, I think the role has changed. You're expected to have a business development, expected to talk to people, talk to owners, talk to private equity firms, talk to investment firms. You need to talk to people. Yeah. So you have to get out there. You got to be personable. I think that is, and then improving your skills, public speaking, all that's a necessity and just building relationships. So that's why networking, just having conversations with people is just so imperative. Yeah, no, and, and you've done a great job of it. We, we've talked about your ability to align with operations, align with sales and marketing. Tell, just give, uh, I guess, give your audience the, what is your thought, your personal thought process around that? Because that, not everybody comes in and does that. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I have this role and this is my role. Exactly. I stay in my lane and we keep it moving, but that's not your thought process. So talk to us about well, I think that. It's like the thirst for knowledge and to constantly get better. Mm -hmm. And then you're striving for something. If I want our organization to be the best it can be, best in class, we always talk about we want domain to be best in class. How am I going to do that? It can't be just putting numbers on a spreadsheet and then presenting to people. It has to be getting me a full understanding of operations, of sales and marketing, and really talking to the people, understanding like what's their mindset. And then relationships. Yeah. I, I think the worst thing would be if I come in and then say, this is the way we're going to do it. Yeah. No one's going to buy in. Exactly. I think you have to understand what is their mindset. What are they thinking? What is, have conversations with operations and everyone? Like, what are the issues? What is what does good look like? And then we can have to understand what is the business? What is happening day to day? Yeah. And then that makes the CFO control role even more imperative because you can make better business decisions when you know what is actually happening. Yeah. And that allows you, I believe, to go confidently. You were talking about CPA firms, investments, yes. uh, all this stuff. You can confidently go and tell not only the data story on those numbers, but you can tell the story on like where are we headed exactly. in these different departments? What have we been able to move the numbers on? Uh, and I think people will gain more confidence in that story of that organization based on how you can communicate that, yeah. um, which is outstanding. And I thought so. It's important. I I want me and like my department, Fancy Smart, to be able to help other departments succeed and make. Yeah. If I'm able to give the sales and marketing team more information, so they're going to succeed, I think it's a win win for everybody and help yeah. their careers and help the company. So yeah. I think or operations. If people, you know, an engineer needs information or is it a project manager, let's get them that information. I think it's imperative. So they're in the best spot to succeed. You're right. You're right. Talk to me about streamlining billing processes. That sounds like fun. Right? It does, <laughs> exactly. but it moves the needle. Yes, so exactly. tell us about that. I think the most important is first, everyone talked about automation. Yeah. I think coming, like me, when I first come in, it's okay. Having a mindset of, okay, this is what we were doing now. It maybe it works, but maybe not. Let's kind of take a look. Yeah. Or maybe even having potential people that work with me have recommendations of how can we make things better. Okay. Not me saying, okay, this is what I think it should be done. No, maybe there's, they have good ideas of how to streamline it. So mostly with automation, there's a lot of systems, obviously you can be currently using, or we're currently using, like when I got a understanding when I first came in, how we could use the system, there's so many workflows, so many ways of just making things so much simpler. And gotcha. if you don't have automation of what your current system, it is worth investing potentially in new software. Okay. You know, Anything uh, off the top of your head of like uh, maybe like a tool that's it's helped the team or, or not? I was just wondering if there was any like specific things that you implemented. Uh, mostly just even just better use of Excel. Okay. I mean, okay. luckily the software we have here is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I'm constantly looking for iterations. Uh, down the line, I want to start looking more forecasting software. Okay. And I think companies should continue to look and see what's out there. I mean, yeah. it's very imperative. No, it's good stuff. Let's go. I'm like six questions deep here, Ooh, and we can man. keep going. <laughs> Roll uh, what should companies avoid or be aware of 
what's like a what's like a red flag that like they don't have Rob, yeah. right? They don't have Rob. I'm looking at my finances. I see it from my bookkeeper. I see it from my accountant. Um, I'm just kind of running my business. Like, yeah. what are some things? Like, uh, what should they be aware of? Yeah. What's gonna like put them in dire situations? Yeah. And what are some also things that like, if you move the needle on these items, your your business is gonna be uh, kind of going to the next level. I would say invest in the right finance people. Okay, uh, especially companies that are firstly starting to grow. So obviously you're gonna start a company, you're gonna have some maybe some admin person, but then as you grow, you wanna make sure you get people who can actually leverage financially. So it doesn't have to be a seasoned person. It could be a, you know someone straight out of college, but they're very hungry. Okay. Leverage them. I like that. Let them under, have an understanding. You know, they really wanna make things better, understand finance, understanding, you know, again, profitability, at finance planning and analysis, fp and mm -hmm. Because that's the kind of stuff there. You get that in place, then you can kind of start trending against the budget. You start trending a budget, you're gonna see where things are off. You know, is, or you're basically, what are you missing? What are the red flags? You're going to start catching that fast. Yeah. So I think you got to basically utilize the finance function as an additional, I should say, strategic uh, strength. Reven strength, 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 revenue, revenue generation. generation. Revenue yeah. generation. Because people don't think finance is also sometimes a generation of revenue, but it can be. It can be. If you've done correctly with projections and where you want to invest your time. Yeah. And also you're dealing in potentially saving costs, which is an additional benefit. So I think it only comes, I'm always saying it comes down to people. Get the right people in. Gotcha. Make sure you get a right. It could be a seasoned person. It could be someone who's just hungry. Yeah. And invest, invest that time in that person. I think, and they're going to help you get the process, just everything in place. Give them the guidance, but and making sure that role is not overlooked. Because I'll be honest, the finance role is not a sexy role. Yeah. Mostly sales and marketing. We all understand that. Totally get it. That being said, I think it's a very uh, imperative role to fill. Yeah, I think it, I think it'll be a strong. Like I want to say, like foothold or pillar within your organization, right? Like you lock that down, your finances are clean and you know growing for yeah. three years. That's going to be very beneficial to the firm. Whether you're looking to sell, whether you're looking to you know add another unit, whatever yeah. you're trying to do, if you can your current core business, you can get under control. Uh, that's going to be beneficial going forward. And I think that. That role is such an admin role that people don't appreciate so that they can help other departments with keeping up analytics, keeping up KPIs, yep. and helping the other departments leverage that ability. Because a lot of other departments aren't going to be admin, and we understand that. They yeah. have so many other better. Put people in the right seat. Don't force someone who's not an admin person to do what they don't do. If they're you know, a salesperson, don't force them to be an ad person. Correct. They're engineer. Let them do the engineering work. So yeah. I think that's imperative. And you know, leveraging that finance admin ability, I think, is, helps throughout the organization. Yeah. No, that's I love it. All right, let's switch over a uh, little personal yeah. questions. Uh, we, we talked about the organizations. Mm -hmm. Let's go to who's, I'm interested. I've never heard this from yeah, you. Yeah. Who's a mentor or leader uh, that you've looked up to in your career? Who's helped you in your career? In my uh, old uh, job, I had someone who, I've never had someone who's like, this is the way you do it. You know. Okay. Luckily, I had someone who was a, essentially, Carl Park was a senior VP of finance uh, currently at um, Motown Re Republic Records. Okay. And even though he just, watching his guidance and how to handle things and handle situations it was very imperative. And just seeing what he did and basically, that's, for me, it's mostly observation. Okay. And other people potentially, that I've, you know, I wouldn't say they're leaders or that I'd want to be, but I could see what not to do. Okay. So that's, that's the flip side. <laughs> yeah. That's the biggest thing. And also, you know, currently here having Rashad Bajwa or yeah. is definitely been fantastic seeing his leadership in the organization and just how to interact with other individuals. Yeah. Okay. So who, g give the shout out, give the name on the Republic uh, contact, your oh, mentor uh, there. Carl, Carl Parks. Carl Parks. There we go. We'll have to hit, hit him up yeah. and see if we can get a little uh, recording with him done. <laughs> What advice, and this is interesting because you bring in people directly from out of college, and which I which I love, and you yep. mentioned before, uh, which I think is a vulnerability for a lot of organizations because they are looking for that person with, you know, I just need the person with 20 to 25 years exactly. experience yeah. and that'll get me to the next level. And yeah. not that they're not hungry, but I, it may be a different point of their career yeah. where, where I like uh, with what Rashad did with bringing you on, somebody who's hungry and your ability to look back and say, I want other people that are hungry. I can teach them the skills, exactly. uh, but I want to see the, the, the thrivingness. I want to see your, your gain. What advice would you give to your younger self? That would be a good one. Just uh, take chances. And don't be risk averse, which is kind of counterintuitive as the finance role. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean I'm going to go do something totally off the rails. But I think when I was younger, I didn't take as many chances, okay. educated chances, you'd say. Yeah. I think that's kind of the, the big thing. It's like, especially when you're young, you're going to have a lot of opportunities. Learn from your failures. I think it's important. Obviously, 
make sure it's educated when you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you have a safety net. <laughs> yeah. That being said, you have the ability to take some chances, and it's going to help you later in your career. Now, also, I feel like I'm in a good spot where I can take the strategic chances, and I know what I'm, I'm getting myself into. I can evaluate the whole plethora, I guess. Of yeah, outcomes, of that's advice. awesome. Love it, sir. Thank oh, you thank for coming you. on, brother. Appreciate I appreciate it. Everybody, that's Mr. Rob Bufano. He is the controller over at Domain Computer Services. Uh, he has a LinkedIn. You can catch him at the CFO Alliance meetings here in New York and New Jersey, right? Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah, even yeah. Philadelphia, yeah. too. So uh, if you want to meet up with him, definitely reach out. This has been good stuff. Thank you, sir. Appreciate having you on here. To ensure that you never miss an episode, subscribe to the show in iTunes or your favorite podcast player. This guarantees that every episode will get delivered directly to your device. To help us get the word out, share with a friend, leave a review, and check out our discussions on the web at go-domain.com podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.